So welcome, and Mr. Armstrong, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, I very much appreciate uh, uh, your invitation to to allow me to present my uh, assessments of the new NASA plan based on the President's uh, 2011, 2011 budget submittal. If one of the goals of government is to motivate its citizenry and to be the best it can be, few government agencies will surpass NASA in that fun function. I have met countless now middle-aged adults who uh, credit NASA's human space programs for inspiring them to study hard in order to master and excel in their chosen field. And they're not just in aerospace, but in education and astronomy and computer science and engineering and medicine. Some question why America should return to the moon. After all, they say, we have already been there. I find that mystifying. It's as if a 16th century monarchs proclaimed that we need not go to the, to the new world. We've already been there. Or if President Thomas Jefferson announced in 1808 that Americans not need, need not go west of the Mississippi because Lewis and Clark have already been there. Americans have visited and examined six locations on Luna, varying in size from a suburban lot to a small township. That leaves more than 14 million square miles yet to be explored. And there's much to be learned on Luna, learning to survive in the lunar environment, investigating many science opportunities, determining the practicality of extracting helium-3 from the lunar regolith, prospecting for palladium group metals, meeting challenges not yet identified. The lunar vicinity is an exceptional location to learn about traveling to diff different, difficult distant places. Largely removed from Earth gravity and Earth's magnetosphere, it provides many of the challenges of flying far from Earth. But communication delays with Earth are less than two seconds, permitting mission control on Earth to play an important and timely role in flight operations. In the case of severe emergencies, such as Jim Lovell's Apollo 13, Earth is only three days travel time away. The long communication delays to destinations beyond the moon mandate new techniques and procedures for spacecraft operations. Mission Control cannot provide a Mars crew their normal helpful advice if the landing trajectory is nine minutes long, but the time delay of radar, communications, and telemetry back to Earth is 19 minutes. Flight experience at lunar distance can provide valuable insights into practical solutions for handling such challenges. I am persuaded that a return to the moon would be a most productive path to expanding the human presence in the solar system. Mr. Chairman, you asked that I present my priorities for the human space <clears throat> program. And I suggest that, first, we maintain American leadership. Second, we guarantee American access to space. And third, we continue to explore the solar system. Leadership, access, exploration. Those are my priorities. The issue facing this meeting has produced substantial turmoil among space advocates. So many normally knowledgeable people were completely astounded by the President's proposal. Had the announcement been preceded by a more typical review, analysis, and discussion among the executive branch, the agency, this Congress, and all the other interested and knowledgeable parties, 
no member of this committee would have been surprised by the announcement of a new plan. In this case, a normally collegial sector of society was split in many fragments. Some focused on contracts and money, some on workforce and jobs, some on technical choices. All because a few planners with little or no space operations experience attempted an end run on the normal planning process. And it has been painful to watch. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I sincerely hope that the members of this committee and all others involved in this process will work openly together to provide a plan which will be the best choice for our country. Thank you.